the Speaker of the County Assembly and all protocols observed. Good afternoon. Uh, students, we want you to hear from Babu Oweno, but I want to tell you two things about him, then I'll sit down. Sometimes two months ago, Babu Oweno received an invitation to the University of Weldios in Benin to receive his honorary doctorate degree. Now, uh, before we could reach that, I have reflected the journey that Babu has walked. I met Babu at the university when I was in the school of business doing my first degree, and he was in the school of uh, science doing his first degree in actuarial science where he got a first class. Then I thought I was the one who knew how to read. When I went to the school of business again to do an MBA, I met him there again doing his master's in actuarial science. So that was not enough for us, so I sneaked into the law school to get an undergraduate degree in law school. I met Babu there, and we sat in the same classes. I listened to his reasoning, his questions on legal philosophy, and the argument that he would make in class. When I went back again to get a master's in law, Babu was also in the same class getting his master's in law. Right now, as we speak, we are both students at the University of Nairobi again. Babu is getting another master's, and I am getting another master's. So those are how many degrees? <laughs> now, something that is similar, again, I grew up in the slums of Kibera, and Babu Oweno grew up in the slums of Nyalenda. Yesterday, something very interesting happened. We had dinner with Babu's mother. Students, do you know where we had it? at a five-star hotel in Kisumu called Acacia Premium. So as I sat there with Babu's mother, seeing the joy on her face, I reflected the journey that we have walked. We have come so far, and yet we still know there's a lot to be done. So I just want to tell you that Babu Oweno is somebody that we are proud of. He makes us proud, and I have seen he makes you guys proud. Last time when there was COVID, he volunteered and taught very difficult uh, subjects online, and some of you were able to participate and see that. So, Babu, you are welcome to give these students the story of your life, and just know that we are proud of you. Thank you very much. I brought these comrades here today so that you, the boys, at Homer Bay County, the boys in the whole country, and the students in the whole country, to know that it is possible, to know that there are those who have been at the university, there are those at the university, and you also to tell you that it's possible, that from here where you headed is straight to the university. And the moment you visit the kingdom of university, your life will be 100% changed. So, I would like to recognize the presence of my two aunties and the reason why they are here, they stay around here, so that you know where I came from. They are with you here, Auntie Helen, just stand up and wave. Auntie Monica, stand up and wave. The two ladies are sisters to my mother and they come from, they are married here at Homer Bay County. I came with them so that if I tell you my story, you become part of that story. As you engulf it, as you digest it, it becomes part of you. Recognizing the presence of my brother, Geoffrey Ajiki, just wave. Thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, and boys, good afternoon once again. I'm Honorable Dr. Babu Owino. I was born and bred in Kisumu, stayed at Nyalenda slums, trying to make ends meet at Nyalenda slums, went to Central Primary School in Kisumu, And in Central Primary School, God blessed me to be a leader. So from class three 
to class 7, I was a prefect. Then in class 7, I was an assistant head boy. Then class 8, I was a head boy. But life was not a bed of roses. Life was not about marrying around. Life was full of challenges. My mother took the responsibility of raising us up. We are three in our family, my sister, brother, and I am the last born. Mom resolved to the fate of selling Changa in Nyalenda slums. You know what Changa is, please don't use it, don't misuse it, and don't abuse it. So don't attempt it. It is not good for you. But that is the only way we could make ends meet. After dad passed on, when we were in class three. So, mom had to struggle, and during that, that, those days, it was the Nyayo era, where Changa was banned. It was an illicit brew. Policemen could come to our house, get people drinking Changa, beat people in the house. So as a child, I grew up with trauma that some of you may be having. Frustrations, bitterness, grief, and all the poisons of life. Mom had an opportunity of only getting for us school fees, for our siblings and myself, food to eat, clothes to put on, money for fees. But that wasn't enough because she could not also perform the role of a man in the house, which she was really trying to do so much. Having struggled that much, seeing my mom being beaten, crying together in the house with our kids, my mom also crying, developed high blood pressure, used to be very sickling a lot. In the midnight, past midnight, we used to carry mom to the hospital, calling Nguari. Then there was no motorbike, the border border border. There was a border border called Nguari, which was a bicycle that was being used to take mom to the hospital. That is at Russia, famously known as Russia. And growing in that lifestyle, we were left to grow. Where at some point, only mom would be asking in the evening, if you guys, if the kids are back at home. So we used to live like chicken. Not eating chicken, but eating like chicken and eating with chicken. What chicken? Eat. Because chicken was a very prestigious meal. But she did it. When I finished my KCPE examinations, I didn't go to Central Primary School to get my results. I was always in position three in primary school. God blessed me with brains, which I believe that God has blessed you with, and I know that you will utilize it well. Because if you leave it to rust, it will multiply you by zero, and raise you to power zero, and get zero. But if, <laughs> if well utilized, you will multiply it by infinity and raise it to power infinity and become infinity. When the results came out, mom went to Central Primary School because she told me to go and get my results, not for fear of failing, but I knew there was no school fees. I knew there was no life after primary school. So what did we do? She went to get the results. Fortunately, I was called at Kisumu Boys High School later on, received a calling letter, but I told mom that I can't go to high school 
because I used to see mom struggling a lot. So mom called all of us, my sister, my brother, and myself. Then we decided who was to be educated in that family. So the rest of my family members dropped their education in support of myself. And that is why I decided to do several degrees, one for my mother, one for my sister, one for my brother, another one for myself, and I'm also doing for my relatives. <laughs> because I said that I would never fail, I didn't want to fail, because it is expensive to fail. So when I refused to go to high school, mom called the area chief, called Chief Kabisai, he's still the chief up to now, to talk to me, because this brilliant young boy has just passed, but he doesn't want to go to high school. So the chief advised me, and I asked the chief one simple question. Do you have the school fees for me to go to high school? Because selling Chang'a to sell 500 milliliters, one tot of Chang'a is was 10 shillings then. To sell it, you get a total of 500 Kenya shillings. To accumulate the 500 Kenya shillings to the school fee, which was around 15,000 Kenya shillings, was next to impossible. Then I told the chief, if you can get school fees for me, then I will join high school. The chief said, just go to school. I remember clearly his words. And I called him to parliament when I was elected to see where he took me. Because I'd given up in life. So the chief said, just go to school. Don't worry about fee. Leave it to us. Fee will just come. Then after that, we called for a fundraiser. The guest of honor, like the way I've been called here as a chief guest, was very much willing to support us. His donation was 200 Kenya shillings, the highest amount ever that we collected. But so many people came there because they really loved education and wanted me to go to school because a child belongs to the community. We were helped. I was helped. That's why I'm here to also help you. Were it not for the community, I would not be here. Then, the total amount of money that we raised was 900 Kenya shillings. And you know you can't call for another fundraiser almost immediately because now people will think that, ah, what to? Wanataka kuomoka na sisi. So after that, I joined Kisumu Boys High School. I'm one of the few students who had nothing, didn't even carry a Bible to go to school with. I just went... I remember I bought my blazer at the stage. They were buying those second, they were selling those second hand blazers. I bought it at 150 shillings, but I was proud of it because I was the most unique student with it in school. But also the principal of Kisumu Boys High School really, really, really did a lot contributing to my education because he never used to send me away. He understood me. Did my form one, form two, form three, Form 4, and on the last day when we were doing KCSE biology practicals, that is when now things were tough again, policemen came in our house, found me selling Chang'a, then arrested me. By then, the policemen didn't want to hear anything to do with education. If you tell them that you are in school, <laughs> you would become their public enemy number one. So I was arrested, taken to Central Primary School. By then, mom was very, very sick in the hospital, admitted. Taken to Central Police Station. Then in the morning, I started screaming and hitting the door of the police cell. Then an officer came who was the OCS of Central Police Station, an officer called Mr. Wanyama, right now he has retired, but a great friend of mine. 
actually he asked me, young man, <laughs> why are you disturbing us here? And I told him, I have KCC examinations, biology practicals. So I have to go and do it, otherwise <laughs> everything will be shattered. I remember him putting me in a land cruiser from Central Police Station to, to Kisumu Boys is just three minutes drive. Went to Kisumu Boys because I couldn't go back home to change. <laughs> By the time I would be back, exams would be over. Then what did I do? Went, did my exams. To cut the long story short, then we were still selling Changa. Passed my examinations, KCSE. Called at the University of Nairobi. At the same time, I got a scholarship to do A-levels at Millennium Academy doing the Cambridge system because of how I performed, scored 72 points out of 84, which was a big try for me. The first time I remember Honorable Gladys buying a newspaper to check for my name in the whole nation. I looked for my number from number one to number 100 I missed. Then I started looking from 100 to one I missed. Then I took, I opened another page, checking Nyanza province then. <laughs> Checked my name. From number one to number 100 I missed. Then 100 to one and I missed. Then I remember it was drizzle, drizzling. I was with a friend of mine called Tom Boyer. He was at Agorosare. He scored an airplane. At some point when we closed school, I'm the one who was teaching Tom mathematics and chemistry. <laughs> it was disappointing. Another lady at Kisumu Boys called Sheila Okumu, now a doctor. I was teaching her accounting and physics and maths. Got 84 airplane, 84 A's, 84 points. Then I saw tears just roll down my cheek. Then I said, I'm done again. So before I was called at the University of Nairobi, I was called at Egerton University to do computer science. At Egerton University. Then I had a neighbor who used to drink in our house and said, if you go to Egerton University, you will come back here and you start treating chicken. <laughs> May his soul rest in peace. He was called Jamkono <laughs> because he was a very, very wise man. And Jamkon always believed in me. He said that if his own kids cannot make it, he will always support me by giving me moral support. So I used to read. When I was in school, I used to sell Changa up to around 2 a.m. because you can't sell, send away clients. So Jamkono just used, after, after, after finishing selling, by 2 a.m., started reading books. Jamkono sits with me up to 5 a.m. I drank lots of coffee, and I don't like coffee up to date. I put my legs in cold water. But Jamkono always believed in me, and he told me one thing. Babu, one thing you must never do. Do not engage in relationships now. Do not have girls now. Do not have a girlfriend now. Do not engage in sexual activities now. Go to the university. At the university, after succeeding, and they, I'm quoting him, if you want to marry one, he used to marry, not marry. If you want to marry one, marry. If you want to marry two, marry. If you want to marry three, marry. So this man saw something in me and he believed in me. So I dropped Egerton. I didn't go to Egerton. I said I'm not coming back to treat chicken. <laughs> and cows. So then I called my cousin called John Omondi, who used to stay in Nairobi. And I told him, I want to come to Nairobi and hustle with you. So Mosh said that, but you did well in your case, you see, why don't you just go to the university? I said, no, I'm not going to the university. So Mosh said, okay, come to Nairobi. I went to Nairobi, a place called Satellite, Kabiria. We stayed in one room with Omosh. Omosh had no job, 
was a security officer, no serious job. We were paying a rent of 1,500 Kenya shillings. And one day Omosh came back with a newspaper in the house. So before I left, Na before I left Kisumu to Nairobi, I told my mom I'm leaving, I'm going to Nairobi. My mom started crying and said, why are you not going to the university? I told her I'm going to look for my life and one day, and I quote, I will come back here in two forms. One, I will come back here in a coffin or I will come back here driving. Those are the things I told my mom and I left because I was so disappointed, so, so disappointed. There is no single day that I was out of top three at Kisumu Boys. The first student in Kenya and any of my former classmates can confirm this, who identified a mistake set in mathematics paper 2, KCSE, was Babu Owen. When I raised it, they said there can't be a mistake in KCSE, therefore you are wrong. After 40 minutes, the invigilator came back and said, indeed there is a mistake, correct. My former schoolmates can clarify that. There is no single day I was out of top three in Kisumu boys. And we were 304 candidates. So I made a decision. So when you are saying that you are learning about decision making in your university, in your various groups, I was so proud of myself because I made a decision that has made me be here today. So I went to Satellite. Omosh came with a newspaper one day. Looking through the newspaper, reading the newspaper, saw a scholarship being offered at Millennium Academy. Then Omosh was the first person to tell me, why don't you apply here and just waste time there instead of sitting here idling in the house? So I applied for the scholarship at Millennium Academy, was successfully admitted at Millennium Academy. I was the head boy. Millennium Academy for two terms. At Kisumu Boys, I was a student leader for a period of the four years that I was at Kisumu Boys. I was to be made the head boy, but because I didn't have money to board, the head boy position was a preserve of the boarders, the people who were, the students who were boarding. At Millennium Academy, we did an exam, international examinations, in mathematics, I became number two in the whole world. The first person was from Spain who got 98%, I got 97%. <laughs> then with that, my director told me, Babu, I was given a scholarship to do actual science at Southampton University in Southern London, but I was given 70% scholarship, so I couldn't afford 30%, which was over 2 million Kenya shillings. So, my director advised me to pursue actual science at the University of Nairobi where I applied and was successfully admitted. While at Millennium Academy, there's a parent who approached me called Margaret Rono, works with the United Nations. That day I scooped so many prizes for maths, accounts, physics, and chemistry. She told me, Babu, I want you to help my son at a fee. The son was my classmate, is now an engineer in the US Navy, Miss Engineer Larry Rono. Then she asked me where I was coming from. I told her my history, my life story, and she offered that I move in their house to stay there in I, I, I helped the son, my, my classmate, in return. She was providing accommodation, clothing, food, and transport to the school. I went and discussed with Omosh and gladly joined the family. After that, long story short, applied at the University of Nairobi, Actual Science, was called at the University of Nairobi, joined in 2008, graduated in 2012, 
with first class honors. I remember we were only 17 out of a class of around 200. After that, I did my master's in actual science. After that, I joined School of Law, University of Nairobi, did master's in law. My first master's in law is in public international law, taking my second master's in law in law, democracy, and governance. At Millennium Academy, I did six diploma courses. At the University of Nairobi, I became a student leader. I was the longest serving student leader on earth. They were calling me <laughs> the Mugabe of the University of Nairobi. But I was elected a record four times, for four terms. Served as the president of the Kenya University's organization and the president of SONU, Students' Organization of Nairobi University. Then after that, I knew things are now shaping up. When I joined the university, I knew things was shaping up for the better. Long story short, went to Embakasi East constituency, vied as a member of parliament in 2017, and was elected. 2022 was re-elected. So all this I say, to God be there, glory. So if I remember my history, my story, where I came from, where, where we were not being raised up, we were given only an opportunity. We were left to grow. Because the only option we had was to sell Chang'a and raise money to help us get basic needs. You who is here with both the parents, you who is here with your brains intact, you can be better than Babu or Wino. When I was going around, I was looking at your faces, and when I looked at you, and when I'm still looking at you, I can see myself. I can see myself in you. When I looked at your teachers, I could see my teachers in them. When I look at the few parents who are here, I could see my mom who was struggling. It, is, it doesn't matter where you came from. What is important is where you are headed as a student. And number one as a student, success equals sacrifice. Success equals sacrifice. You must sacrifice your time. You must sacrifice your comfort. You must sacrifice to be the best. You must sacrifice that which will inhibit you from achieving what you want to achieve in life. You must sacrifice. And you must be desperate. Desperate to fight for your destiny. Desperate to achieve your goals. Desperate for your dreams. Desperate to pass exams. And in pursuit of knowledge, in pursuit of education, we say education is the, is the key to success. And when you open the door of a classroom, you close the gates of a prison. The fruits of education, the roots of education are bitter, but the fruits are very sweet. Education is the only weapon that when used well can transform the whole world. Every treasure in the world is hidden somewhere in a book. And the only thing that can replace a book is the next book. So therefore, when you wake up in the morning, education. In the afternoon, education. In the evening as you sleep, education. And as you pursue education, remember that you must sacrifice. You must sacrifice your time. Time is wasted in seconds. 
We only have 24 hours in a day. Will you spend these 24 hours looking for a girlfriend, having sex, being on social media, playing around the whole day, and too much work without play also makes Jack a dull boy. So you must only put some time, but not all the time, for the sporting activities so that you can refresh your mind. And you will never succeed if you don't sacrifice your time. You will never succeed if you sleep when the world is sleeping. You will never succeed if you wake up when the world is waking up. You will never succeed if you don't wake up at 5 a.m., at 4 a.m. You will never succeed if you don't sleep at 11 p.m. To gain an extraordinary result, you must. You must have extraordinary sacrifices. So you must sacrifice your time. Number two, your comfort. You fail because you are comfortable. You are comfortably playing throughout. You are comfortably joking around in class. You are comfortably making jokes at others while they are busy reading. You are comfortably saying that your mom and your dad will help you. You are reading, you are learning for yourself, not for your mother, not for your father. It is for your future. So the greatest enemy of success is comfort. Therefore, never be comfortable. Therefore, you must rise and fight for yourself as a student, as the boy child. Thirdly, fear. You fail because you are afraid. You are afraid to fail. You are afraid to do your exams right. You are afraid to raise your hand in class to answer questions because you fear that other classmates will laugh at you. You are afraid. From today and forth, look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am not afraid. Can we say, I am not afraid? I am not afraid, I am not afraid to pass exams. I am not afraid to make my parents proud. I am not afraid to make it in life. I am not afraid to achieve my destiny. I am not afraid to answer questions. I am not afraid of the teacher. Fear means forget everything and run. Fear also means Face everything and rise. Which fear are you going to choose? Which fear are you going to choose? So you must face everything and rise. Otherwise, the challenges that you are running away from will catch up with you. The best student, the best person will face his or her fear. And the solution will always come out. It doesn't matter what type of a solution, but you will get a solution if you face your fears. Number four, the last person you are, the past self. The trauma that you are having, the bitterness that you are having, the frustrations that you are having, the envy that you are having, the grief that you are having, the jealousy that you are having, the unforgiving spirit that you are having, the loneliness that you are having, are called the poisons of life. The poisons of life, if you store them in you, they will start blowing like waffle pancake and they will destroy you. Therefore, you must forget the past self and you must embrace the newer version of you. We say in newer levels, newer devils. A newer level, a newer devil. Yesterday's success, today's success, might not be tomorrow's success. 
It can't be tomorrow's failure. Therefore, you must be consistent. You must forget about your past self. You must forget about saying that my mom is struggling, my dad is struggling to get you school fees and focus on books. You must eat books like yams. You must read books. That is where the solution lies. Why it not for education, Babu Owino would not be standing here. Why it not for education, Babu Owino would never be a member of parliament. Why it not for education, Honorable High Excellency Gladys Wanga would not be a governor. Why it not for education, Dr. Ivo Barra would not be here. Why it not for education, the deputy governor and all the leaders who are here, they would not be here today. Therefore, it starts with education, it goes to education, and it ends with education. So comrades, I call you comrades because I'm proud of you, and I know that very soon you will join various universities. Please remember that life begins at the university. How will you feel when I fell some years back? when I didn't get what I deserved and what I wanted, but it was God's plan. But how will you feel when all the students, when your friend, when the girlfriend you've been calling and meeting goes to the university and you don't qualify to join a university? How will you feel? Will you, as a student, want your child to be more intelligent than you? That you can't even help them doing homework? Will you want that? Will you want your wife to be more intelligent than you? At least the intelligence will be in tandem. An amalgamation of both of you in future, a husband and a wife, which you will be, must give you the best product of a baby. So therefore, Boys, let's embrace education, education, education. And lastly, the teachers. These boys, no matter how much we talk to them, with them, they will never make it without you. These are your children. For a student to make it, the student rule number one, you must love the teacher. The teacher, you must make yourself likable or lovable by the student. Do not be hostile. I remember dropping geography in Form 2 when my geography teacher made me stand on top of a desk for 40 minutes and I left that subject. <laughs> I loved geography. I can still remember the Ignatius rocks, sedimentary rocks, <laughs> the longitudes and the latitudes, but I dropped it for fear of the teacher. The teacher, you are part of the success to these students you are seeing here. Therefore, deal with them the same way you would have dealt with your child. These are your children and you are really trying. And the teacher must also be motivated. The student must motivate the teacher by passing exams so that the teacher feels comfortable with that class. Rule number two, you must practice. As a student, practice makes perfect. We say proper Prior preparation prevents poor performance. We say proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. If you prepare well, you will definitely make it. So therefore, after being, after liking the teacher, like that subject. After liking that subject, Please, practice. Number four, make sure you befriend a fellow student who understands that subject better. The moment you understand, the moment you befriend that student, they will help you. And for those who are talented, you didn't go to that class knowing. You also knew in the course of learning. So please share knowledge. Please share knowledge. Do not laugh at your classmate. And when you are being laughed at, tell that person to continue laughing because you know your journey, you know your destiny, and you know your story. 
You who are seated here, you are the pride of your parents. You are the only person that the parent, your parent wants you to succeed. They are doing a lot. They are going through a lot. Selling bogus, selling changa like my mother, going from Django, riding a boda boda just for you. So therefore, do not disappoint them. Last but not least, boys, 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 you are at a stage called puberty. Puberty or adolescent stage. At that stage, you will experience so many emotional changes. Hormones will be conflicting with each other. You will experience physical changes. You will see your shoulders broadening without carrying weight. You will see yourself experiencing a lot on your faces, pimples, appearance, and then you shall feel that you are a man. You will start feeling that you are argumentative. You will start feeling that you know it all. You will start feeling that now you have reached. It is not bad to be in that stage. At some point, we were all there. Even our ladies, they go through the adolescent stage. Us as men, we were there. But how you control yourself, how you control your appetite, how you control your mood will determine because you are fighting with two things. You are fighting with the stage and you are fighting with education. If you allow one to consume you, you are finished. You may be finished completely, but not completely finished. As you fail, allow yourself to fail. Know what it is to fail. If you must fail, that is. But fail 10 times and rise 11 times, you shall have succeeded. Don't fail 10 times and fail another the 11th time you shall have failed. Therefore, at that stage, you must still respect your parents. You must respect the people around you. You must stop this affair. The juice is not worth the squeeze. That girlfriend you are having now, you will not have that girlfriend by the time you are finishing your university. That girlfriend who is having you now will not be with you when you fail your exams because they will never end up with nor marry an academic orphan. They will never marry an academic dwarf. They will never marry an academic lilywat. They will never marry a person who does not perform. Therefore, as a student in that stage, be respectful Put God first. Always be positive. The Bible says that in the beginning there was the word, and the word was with God, and the word became God. Therefore, whatever comes out of your face, out of your mouth, for the Bible says that when a tongue confesses and the mouth speaketh, so shall it come to happen. Every time when you're experiencing challenges, when you're failing, say today I've failed, tomorrow I will pass. Today, this challenge is with me. Tomorrow I will overcome it. And eventually you will overcome because the universe will conspire with the positivity. But if you are negative, you will go down. Today I'm telling you. At that stage, please, you will soon be a man. So I will address you also as a man. And as a man, the responsibility of a man is to provide. You will be required to provide for your wife. You will be required to provide for your children. You will be required to provide for the community. As a man, you must fight as a man. You must never give up. You will always know that it is you. The world revolves around you as a man to provide because that is what the Bible dictates. That's what the Bible says. And therefore, as a boy, make sure you work hard. As I was going around, somebody said we must work smart. That is what we call baldadash, gibberish, nonsensical. You must work hard. There is no shortcut to the city of victory. You must take the stairs. You must walk the stairs. You must moil. You must toil. You must sweat. There will be gnashing of the teeth. But you must forge forward. If you must fall do not have a plan B. Do not fall at the back. Fall forward. If you must fall, fall. 
forward at least you'll be seeing where you are going if you fall backward you will never see where you are going vijana ria vijana ra vijana tibim vijana tialala vijana ha vijana mne that's my love for you thank you god bless you